uh, thank you, Jerry, for introducing me. Um, but also thank you, Grenchen, for organizing this, this wonderful conference. Um, it's great being back again at Reading, as uh, Vic also already mentioned, it's a bit strange as well. And although I haven't left um, a while ago, it's okay, it's still two years ago since I was last back here. Um, but uh, yeah, it's just great to yeah, see friends and colleagues again and uh, to yeah, share the knowledge about the new uh, writing systems that are being discovered or is being discovered as being um, translated into type cases and generally sharing the knowledge about those non Latin uh, projects basically. Um, what I'll be talking about today is um, um, a new self-initiated uh, research project that I will be embarking on in the fall of this uh, year. Um, it's a follow-up, basically, from researches I did for my PhD on Tibetan and the postdoctoral research on Mongolian uh, script. Um, and the project is called Sherpa, the writing systems of the Himalayas. It's mainly like an, an umbrella project to name in a different um, minority scripts of the Himalayas. I know, again, a map, but it's just easier to <laughs> focus where everything is situated. Um, I will basically, in Sherpa, be studying um, the minor minority uh, writing systems and scripts that are um, being used in the Himalayan mountain region, um, which is basically scripts in Tibet, in Bhutan, uh, Sikkim, Ladakh, uh, and also Bhutan. Um, it's basically scripts that have been neglected in the typographic tradition. Most of those writing systems do not have a printing type, uh, either as a wood type or as a, a, a metal type. And most of them only exist in lettering or um, engravings, um, uh, carvings and, and you name it. The project is picked off with one minority script in particular. Um, it's a script uh, which is called Blenza and also Ranjana, hence the double uh, title um, on the top. Um, and it's a script that actually always occurred when I was doing my field trips uh, for my PhD on Tibetan and also um, on Mongolian writing systems. Um, because it's a script that mainly was used by the Buddhists, um, and that's how it was represented in literature, the Buddhists or the Daulas. Um, and it actually moved um, along uh, with Buddhist tradition. So when Buddhism um, emerged from uh, India, went to Tibet, all over um, the Himalayan region, to Nepal, but also to China and, and Japan, um, it was a script that always um, moved with, with the development. So apart from um, the actual writing systems that have been used for um, text writings, this Lensa or Ranjana um, writing system um, was also um, occurring at the same time. I'm not the first one who has uh, studied this particular writing system. Um, also earlier uh, academics and linguists have been uh, documenting this, this script. And in particular, um, Hachon, Joma, Hoa and uh, Chandra Das, um, who were explorers um, of um, um, linguists and also explorers of the Himalayas, in a sense, um, made a lot of um, plates and also a lot of documents and visual representations, again, as literary, in their early writings. Here you can see an example um, of Hochon uh, from 1828, um, and he writes about um, actually the notices of the languages, the literature, and the religion of the Baldas, which is referred to as the Buddhists of Nepal and Bodh, which is uh, Bodh is um, a reference to Tibet and Bhutan. The Lanza script, um, as it is known in mainly Bhutan and Tibet, has sim similarities with Ranjana, which is or originated in um, Nepal from this, at the same period. They both originated from the North Indian Gupta and Brahmi script. It's a script that actually has been the source for many um, Bodh writing systems, uh, for instance, Siddham is one of the others, uh, but also other Indian or North Indian writing systems um, emerged. So they, they share similar um, features and characteristics. Now, as I mentioned earlier, those writing systems, especially Ranjana and Ranjana, um, has never been um, produced as a, uh, as a font or a printing type. So the aim for me is actually to find clues 
in order to translate the lettering in a way that Pipe have already mentioned, like what are we looking for, uh, what kind of models do we use, because are those in fact good models or not, um, and how do we translate them into a working uh, digital font, basically. Um, Hochon uh, mentions that um, it did not occur um, earlier than the 11th century. Um, you can see another example in which it documents already uh, the Abu Kida syllabary, which is like the main um, concept of, of the writing system of uh, the Gupta and also and, uh, the Ranja or uh, Lensa writing system. Um, and also already just basically represents all the scripts that he can find on his uh, travels and also on his studies of these uh, uh, scripts that are prevalent. Another pioneer is um, William Carey. Uh, sorry, sorry, it's, it's, uh, sorry, it's William Carey is of course a pioneer in early um, Indian uh, writing systems. Um, and uh, for Tibet and Lhansa, it's mainly Joma. Uh, the Hungarian linguist uh, was quite an important factor in the whole development of getting representations of Tibetan um, to the Western world. He was the first to actually, one of the first to make um, a dictionary for the Tibetan language and also an accompanying uh, grammar book. And in 1834, um, in addition to the grammar of the Tibetan language, he also included several plates uh, that represent the complete syllabary of uh, the Lanza writing system. Again, I'm using Lanza in this case to discuss Lanza but also Ranjana because in the literature um, it's mainly Lanza that is being talked about. Uh, they do actually um, <coughs> excuse me, um, refer that it's uh, is similar to Ranjana um, language um, but it's more practical to use the terminology or the term or the sense basically. Um, Sandra Das, who was the last person who did a uh, quite exhaustive um, publication on uh, the sacred and ornamental uh, writing systems of Tibet, or scripts in Tibet, um, explains that the script Lanza was not uh, developed at the same time that the older writing systems of Tibet, mainly the Uchen and the Uchi, uh, were developed, but that it occurred 400 years later, so in the 11th century. So that actually Tony Sambota was uh, the originator from the Tibetan script, did not know uh, the Ranjana or the Lanza script at the time that he was actually developing the scripts for uh, the Tibetan language. Um, he too gives like a well-documented overview um, of uh, the syllabary, which means not only the base characters, but um, as most people know, um, but I'm going to just explain it in short, that uh, the 36 consonant can be combined not only with four to six individual vowel signs, but also with one, one another to create syllables. So that's why the whole syllabary is quite exhaustive and much larger than a character set or um, an alphabet that we can have for the Latin script. So he documents these writing systems, again, in um, um, lithographed ways. Um, some of the others um, might be done by copper engravings. And as the predecessor that he, uh, that he did, he also showed other ornamental uh, writing systems that occurred. Um, the last person was Hola, um, a Dutch linguist who uh, also um, um, worked um, on um, trying to collect the different writing systems of India, old and new ones, collected in his handwritten tables. Um, the Lanja, which is Ranjana, that originated it or located it for Nepal. Um, another person, not from the West, but uh, from Tibet itself, um, is um, also in favor of the theory that the Lanza did not occur at a similar moment um, than the Uchi and the Uchen uh, from the Tibetan language, but it developed four centuries later mainly because he was basing his theories on uh, the paleographic collection from Bühler and within those 300 manuscripts he could not find one specific manuscript that was dated before the 11th century. So that's why this Tibetan based the arguments that it was not happening before um, uh, the 11th century. Um, as you could see from the many plates that I showed you before in um, uh, the, the slides, um, 
The specific features of Lanza or Anjana are a very ornamental or decorative style. It's a quite heavy type uh, 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 script um, with heavy strokes, it's a broken script. And as you can see in the following samples that I collected during my travels um, in Tibet, China, uh, Mongolia, India, Nepal, and uh, the last trip to Bhutan, is basically that the script is not only used um, within Nepal or in Tibet, but that it's mainly used in all different regions where are Buddhist sites. And with Buddhist sites, I mainly refer to either temples or monasteries or um, libraries, uh, special collections, um, even stupas, which is like, like small landmarks in which people like um, um, pray or, or make offerings to nature um, as landmarks. And so there you can see all those different uses of the scripts. Here you can see, for instance, some examples of uh, the decorative lens are being used um, as lettering on wood, um, um, wooden pillars which are actually um, interacting with the architecture of the temples and the architecture of the buildings, usually on top of the uh, main gate, opening gate in which you enter the building, um, which explains what the building is about. I forgot to mention, but it's mentioning, I'm, I'm be mentioning it now, that in Tibet, um, and also well, in Tibet mainly and, and in Bhutan, Lhasa was only used for writing or lettering texts that were translated from Sanskrit or like early um, Indian literature. So the first Buddhist literature did not occur in Tibetan or in Mongolian, it occurred in Indian, mainly in Sanskrit, and it's only the texts that were translated from Sanskrit into Tibetan that were actually written in the Lhasa writing system. For uh, ordinary texts or like um, ordinary um, communication, they would use the Uchen or the Uchi um, script, basically. So, Beijing, in the sites, the main temples, um, even in the Forbidden City, in the special shrines, they have it. Here you can see examples from uh, stupas uh, from Bhagnath and, um, and um, the Monkey Temple, um, I forgot the Nepali name, in, in Kathmandu. You can see them again um, on the different um, architectural features in wood, but also like in Buddhist artifacts. Like for instance, this is a very huge bell uh, in which uh, the prayers or the mantras have been written. And this is in Tibetan Uji script. And the main uh, mantras or the main Sanskrit texts are like, uh, in this case, embossed because it's like molded into copper um, below um, the base of the, the actual uh, clock, basically. Um, lettering in Mongolia, for instance, uh, at the old uh, monastery of Karakorum, uh, the old capital of Mongolia, you can find um, mantras and um, also Sanskrit texts on top of the prayers and the buildings, but also in collections. Um, here you can see a combination with Mongolian, the vertical script on left and the right. Um, the Lanza on top, the, the translation transliterated into Tibetan, and then the actual Tibetan translation as the second one here, and then the Cyrillic Mongolian um, as uh, the lower part. And it's again on top of like the main Buddhist sites um, in um, Ulaanbaatar, in which you can also see a big Kala Chakra, which is part of a, a ritual in which tapestry has been embroidered. Uh, sometimes they also do it with sand, um, and um, it's part of this. Bhutan, uh, you can find the Lanza scripts almost everywhere you look, uh, because it's a quite a very small one of the, the, the only small um, Buddhist kingdoms um, still preserving their tradition very well. And you can see it everywhere, like from um, those uh, monograms, mystic monograms that you see on the left, on top of prayers which are used or offered by people, uh, two mandalas in which like root syllables or one simple uh, syllable um, is decorated in a specific style. Um, also in combination with like the other Omani Pemeum or other mantras which like um, make wishes to people. Wood, um, you can see clay engravings, engravings. Here you can see again some very beautiful um, um, carpentry. It's like wood engravings. Um, 
incorporated in the architecture of Zongs. Zongs is like an old fortress in which, in the old days in Wintown, both the religious but also the political center was happening at the same time, just to protect the, the small villa, um, valley or town. Um, decorated either uh, in relief, um, out or inside, with com uh, comparisons. And here, for instance, I was very lucky, lucky to be witnessing like the, the, the making of a new Buddhist temple at the Bumtang Valley of Bhutan, in which the whole building is literally carved by hand. Um, it's, it's quite tall. Um, on the right, you can see not only the Sanskrit te texts uh, that have been engraved, uh, but also all the decorative elements from the, the flowers, uh, the animals that are shown, the Buddhist motifs. Um, and a small part already was being decorated and painted, so you can see at the end, um, the top right actually, that um, it's all manufactured by hand and the end result will be very colorful and exciting. But also other details, we'll see this, uh, base, this use of um, uh, the Lanza writing system, Lanza script, um, details within the architecture, the pillars of, uh, to hold the roof, but also Buddhist artifacts to perform rituals, like if it's a ceremony uh, on a head or something. Outside to give the prayers, uh, you've got the manis, the mana prayer wheels. Um, there's, I've got a, hundreds of photos of all these different prayer wheels because each one, each letter or each artist has their own freedom as well to express uh, within these different styles. Um, but it's always a, almost the same mantra, depending to which Buddhist deity that you wish to pray for that is being represented. It can be either painted, but also like again uh, molded in copper. Um, examples from Bhutan. No, sorry, that's this one. Yeah, this one. So you can see different details. The, the bottom right one is an example, a very exquisite one in Nepal, at the foot of the bit of the big. Uh, um, Baltnat um, stupa, in which uh, the two Buddha eyes are shown around. It's a very, yeah, you can't see it from the photo, but it's like a very big prayer wheel which takes several people to actually uh, rotate it. Um, but it's also for um, personal use. So in this case, it's like the very small um, hand prayer wheels, in which you can see already like um, more decorative elements. Um, in a different style, there's like almost an inline inside uh, the Lancer writing system. Some of them uh, characters, some of them have, are very expanded. These two last photos come from um, the collection from Cambridge University. Last year they had a very nice exhibition on the work of the Buddhas, in which a lot of manuscripts uh, were um, shown. Uh, and also other artifacts, not only in Tibetan um, and in Lhasa, but also other writing systems. Um, and they're very open to for collaborations. Um, so it's quite interesting to know uh, the people and the connections over there, which I'm happy to share with whomever wants. It's very easy to do. Um, but also, for instance, in European um, institutes, this is an example from Lanza being used in the Tibetan Institute in Belgium, both in Antwerp, in Brussels, and in Huy, that actually use it again for um, either paintings, murals on the wall to depict specific Buddhist. Um, um, stories, but also outside the different um, temples and monasteries that have been uh, present. On the other hand, there is also use of Ranjana in Nepal. And you can see a slightly different use, although that they also use it for the, the religious uh, Buddhist sites, they also, because of cultural awareness in a sense, um, they also use it actually as a second writing system next to um, Devanagari, um, for shop signs or for um, um, indicating the gates entrance of in this case this sites sorry in this case Patan area close to um, Kathmandu area um, and also uh, for instance to create logos for everyday use here you can see a combination of even the transliteration in Latin and the lower part is actually the specific feature of the Lanza script combined. Uh, on the right side, it's like they use it also to yeah, for a logo for uh, music um, shop and everything. But especially from the 90s, there have been well 70s as well. But there have been more and more uh, writing manuals in Nepali, whereas previous it was mainly Tibetans who actually produced from the woodblocks um, examples from how uh, the writing the Lhasa script is written, basically. And that comes to my next, um, actually, uh, use of the Lanza script. I showed um, 
some examples of a very decorative ornamental used in very large sizes, and some of them are very large, as I, as I am saying. But it's also very delicately used. Again, it's always used as a display size. It's mainly used to either introduce the text or the book, or in this case, the page, which is similar to the potis that Faiba um, showed earlier, uh, like the vertical um, Sanskrit, in this case, texts that are used for ceremonial uh, purposes. And here you can see on the borders of this um, um, book, book cover, basically, that actually holds the, the paper cover, uh, paper sheets together, like uh, the writing of the actual text that is kept inside. Um, most of the religious books um, or Sanskrit texts within the Buddhist uh, uh, temples or monasteries are preserved in um, cupboards. That's correct. So they also engrave the title of the, the writing on the side part of the wooden shelf. So you can see if the books are stacked upon each other in the often like open uh, bookshelves and sometimes you close. All these I find very gorgeous and detailed Lanza writing. Um, to explain what is inside. Um, also more delicately used, again as a title size, is uh, the Lanjana within uh, the manuscripts themselves, often written in, in black and white, uh, but also sometimes decorated with um, silver or blue paper, um, embroidered even, uh, and, and etc. This is an example from um, some Buddhist texts, <coughs> sorry, from the uh, Ganden Monastery in Alambater, um, of which I was lucky from uh, this, this kind of moment to actually show me quite a lot of examples um, from the private collection and that is kept within the monastery, um, which was not always easy because through Russian um, occupation in a way lots of has been destroyed um, because I couldn't use uh, the Mongolian writing system um, anymore. Here is one of the wood blocks that has been preserved. Uh, it's not from the same collection, but from a private collector, in which, I hope you can see it clear, um, the four writing systems that are being used in Mongolian have been used to um, engrave, basically, in wood, um, like the Buddhist mantra uh, that had to be reproduced. It's a wooden print block that actually um, is printed on cotton or on, on wood to actually have like grave parts or anything. So the top one is the Lanza. Um, also in Mongolia they refer to the script as Lanza, not as Ranjana, but again it's the same writing system. Tibetan as a second part, Soyomba, Soyombo, which is a specific writing system within uh, Mongolia. And then the actual traditional Mongolian script, um, all translating the same literature. Now, as a typeface designer, obviously looking at all those beautiful lettering is one thing. Um, but another aspect is like how do you get about studying uh, the script for use? There are quite a few manuals available. Um, I was lucky to get some photos because I could not afford this manuscript. It's still available, by the way, but I think it's about 2,500 pounds. Um, and you can, it's in Sweden in a bookstore, um, which is one of the earlier um, um, writing manuals for writing Lanza and between brackets and Ranjana that they mentioned. Um, it originates from the 18th, 19th century, sorry, and it has both uh, um, the Lanza, um, Tibetan, and also Mongolian. So people who are interested, I have the contact detail from um, the bookshop keeper, so feel free to contact, you never know. But it explains like one of the earlier writing manuals to actually study the script, because lay people never used it. It was only a happy few, so to speak, who were able to read Sanskrit as well, but also that, uh, that used that writing system within that Buddhist um, environment. Um, I'll come back to it in a moment. Uh, that some of the later pages also show those, <coughs> sorry, those monograms, which actually a combination of the different Lanza characters, but all combined in one syllable and all intertwined, so some of the strokes are actually like interacting with each other and like intertwining basically, like twigs of a tree. Um, I've collected over the years, through to my different um, um, research projects, also different writing manuals on Tibetan and on Mongolian and Nepali, and some of them are also like um, very useful for the Lanza or Ranjana because they have been incorporated. Some of them obviously are like a repetition or like a reciting of 
some of the wood blocks, so it's like just the same book but with a different book cover. Um, but also others like uh, the Sidam writing system, uh, because it's related, it has a very be beautiful image inside the book from uh, Gulik, if I'm not mistaken, it's a Dutch linguist, who actually explains the, the features by using a wooden brush to actually write like the extension of um, the lower part of the stem, <clears throat> because that's a specific feature of the script. Here you can see an example of one of the Nepali uh, writing manuals in which explains how to write the individual strokes of the characters, but they have a different approach than the Tibetan ones. <coughs> Sorry. Um, they start with the head stroke and then go down and combine different ones. Um, but the Tibetan um, approach is that there is indeed like a sort of calligraphic grid from seven to five different units. Um, but they explain, um, and it's a very exhaustive work um, on the treasury of knowledge in the, in the Tibetan classical learning and Buddhist phenomenology, <coughs> which has been translated from original Tibetan sources and verses, basically, because the original text was all written in verse, a kind of poetry. And <coughs> I'm just going to read it quickly, because I know I don't have a lot of time. That the ancient script to, um, of the Buddha, basically, um, there are 64 different types of ancient scripts. So, as you can see, Lanza is one of them, but there are quite different variations as well at the time of the Buddha. But Ranjana, virtual, and so forth are supreme. Um, virtual is, I think, a spelling error because it's <coughs> Vartua, or Vartu script. Um, I think it's like an automatic spelling that was on here, but uh, because there exists also more fluent uh, stylistic feature, which is Vartu, Vartu of or Vartu written, and basically the headline or the headstroke of I can't see it here uh, of the script um, has like either a wave downwards um, or is completely removed. So that's like a variation of the Lanza script. Um, but they actually start. Um, um, two grids. Um, for the headstroke and the net stroke, you've got three and the, sorry uh, of each other, and three for the body strokes. Among these, the headstroke is drawn last. So they have a different approach in like building of the characters than um, the Ranjana one. Um, it's all different manuals for different users in a sense. Um, here you can see um, from um, Lipi Tapuguti basically. Um, again, the writing system being explored, um, giving also the different syllables, combinations, um, extensions. Um, a writing manual from Tibet shows again how the different tiers or dimensions uh, can be maintained depending on the stroke or the brush that you use. Um, it can be a, a brush you, you will see later. Here is also a very how to do it manual, starting from stroke one to the final. Um, <coughs> end result of each of the characters or the glyphs. They even give uh, explanations to actually um, give, pre, uh, how do you say, um, create the more decorative large um, samples of the, of the scripts um, for uh, copper engraving or for embossing on different uh, reliefs. Um, another tool, as I mentioned or showed earlier, was like just a wooden brush, but another tool is just a flat brush, which everybody can use. You can either use um, or make a tool yourself. Um, but that's also used to explain or to, to mention like this um, Kala Chakra monogram, which is the, the most known example of this uh, mystical uh, monogram, that explains like all the different uh, characters of the Lanza script which have been combined. Um, you've got two different uh, main um, <coughs> mystic syllables or monograms that are used in Lanza, which is this one, which is the 10th um, tier level, uh, in which you can see both the, the seven conjuncts which have been combined, and the chorus indicates also on the temples where uh, each uh, character and each stroke belongs to, basically. The top ones are actually like the vowel signs um, and um, yeah, the more sacred um, arts basically to indicate this syllable or this mantra. So the total of this makes it a 10 um, character monogram. At present, of course, I'm trying to find solutions to create a digital typeface. Um, there have been a few attempts made, meaning that not yet 
fully functioning. Um, in 2009, Michael Everson uh, did a lot of effort, efforts in encoding the Lanza and Ranjana because he made a proposal for Ranjana script uh, for an uh, Unicode encoding, encoding, but it is still pending, so it's not yet incorporated. Um, there have been examples uh, of alphabets being designed um, for logos or for um, specific um, yeah, projects, I suppose. Uh, but the one typeface that I know which is the most exhaustive, but still for personal use, is one by Christopher Finn, who proposed a few um, Tibetan and Lansa mantras. So this is one fully functioning, in a sense, uh, Lansa uh, or Landisa, which is the same, uh, but a different transliteration uh, font. Uh, but he told me that he's using the Tibetan encoding um, for actually making the Lanza. So he uses the encoding from Tibetan to actually produce the digital fonts and to do the open type scripting as well. Um, so it's still there is a lot of work going on. Um, and I'm like many others of you that I think um, every language and every writing system deserves well executed fonts to give it to users, whether they are millions or just a single individual, to give the freedom to give them the freedom to express thoughts and opinion, opinion, opinions sorry, in a visual matter with the aid of aesthetically pleasing digital graphemes and without any technological hindrance. So in that sense, I think I won't be the only one telling this today. I mean, quite a lot of speakers today and tomorrow in the rest of the conference. But I feel that even a minority script deserves like, the chance to have a good uh, yeah, a good um, executed digital font, whether it's just for one user or not. I know there's different aspects concerned, like with, with, it takes time to, to design it, it's also expensive to do, so I can understand why people are not, but it's especially for students or for people who are very skilled, um, like there's a few of them in the room as well, that actually embark on these kind of projects as well, that have the means and the skills actually to do this. Um, I hope you were a bit inspired with the examples that I showed um, because it's mainly the beginning of a project, like the introduction of a project that I will start. Um, a detailed research paper will get published in the new edition of Building Letters, which will be um, the Himalaya edition. We're still working on it, so it's still early years, but it's for the uh, Font 8 uh, Nepal project. So that's going to be a publication together with uh, <coughs> and that we will be developing from all the contributions. Um, and at the fall of 2015, um, I'm also going to yeah, make the website sherpafont, uh, actually com live, in which I will explain the development of the typeface, not the one from Fontaine, but the one from Lanza and everything together with uh, resources that everybody can use, but also like a digital, uh, sorry, a photographic database, so that all the images that I took in the different locations can be used by different people, because what's the use of having them just on my laptop or my computer? I mean, it's nice, it's like photographic interesting, but I think it's more useful to share it with uh, other people that are interested. So I'll keep you posted on the developments, and please feel free to, um, yeah, ask questions or if you need more information, feel free to contact me. That's my email. Thank you very much.